So we're saying this afternoon, we start the meditation with thoughts of goodwill. To clean out our minds from all the stories of the day. This person did that, that person did this. Or the stories of the year, or the stories of your lifetime. Think about that statement at the end of the, the chant just now, those who are capable of making an end. That's what we're trying to do, put an end to suffering. That means putting an end to a lot of the stories that we keep dragging out. Because it's those stories that keep us going, especially if there's some wrong that we want to right. It means we have to come back. And of course, what happens when a wrong gets righted? Some more wrong gets done, usually. And then the other side decides that they've been unfairly treated, and it goes back and forth like this. There are many stories in the commentaries about issues going back and forth, to the point where you lose track of who started it. So it's best to think in ways that can put an end. One of the best ends is that you decide that you're going to step out of the back and forth. Pull yourself out of the feeding chain. So that's what you're doing right now. So to whatever extent you need to do a little extra adjustment to the narrative, especially in cases where you were the wrong party the last time around. Say you decided to forgive the other side and try to find a way out. Because so much of life in samsara is just, just a big fight. And the Buddha's image is of fish in a stream that's drying up. They're struggling with one another for that last gasp of air and that last gulp of water, and then they're going to die. So you ask yourself, well, who, does it really matter who gets that last gulp of water? Who gets the final victory over somebody else? How about getting victory over yourself? The Buddha said that kind of victory is really worthwhile. That's what the path is all about. The unexcelled victory is the victory through the Noble Eightfold Path. And that's one where you're not fighting with anybody outside at all. You're fighting with your own greed, aversion, and delusion. And all your attachments. One of the hardest attachments to let go of, they say, is the sense of having been wronged. And there's usually a desire to want to get back, or at the very least have the other side acknowledge that it did wrong. But remember, we're living in a world where people have the right to withhold kindness, they have the right to withhold any goodness if they want to. And the more you try to force things out of other people, then then you become the bad party who is pushing his way or push, pushing her way on, on others. So one of the hardest things we find living in this world where we have freedom of choice is that other people have freedom of choice. It's hard to accept sometimes. We want things to be a certain way outside. But people have every right to think whatever they want and say whatever they want and do whatever they want. That's when you have to have equanimity. So you can focus on what the real issues are, is that you keep on churning up more issues inside. As the Buddha said, the craving that makes for becoming. Well, 
That's an issue. Because once you make a becoming, then you become a being with needs to feed. And you live in a world where other beings are trying to feed as well. So there's going to be conflict. So you have to remember the, the becomings in your mind are not just idle pastimes. They actually have a big impact on what's going to happen now and on into the future. I have a friend who wrote a novel, which is basically a storytelling contest between two groups of Taoist gods and goddesses. Part of the novel is the story that they're taking, they're writing back and forth. And then part of the story is, of course, the backstory behind the, the machinations and the politics between the different groups of gods. And they managed to give this, the heroine of the story, a really rough life. People are getting killed off all over the place. All kinds of misery is being parceled out to all the various characters. And then at the very end of the novel, Kuan Yin appears, and she says, okay, now you guys are going to have to live the story that you created. And the final scene in the novel is all these gods and goddesses falling out of heaven, coming down to earth. So that's a good symbol for what the Buddha teaches us, is the fantasies we have and the mental worlds that we create. They're going to create actualities. But they're going to have consequences that you may not have expected. So you have to be very, very careful about the, the becomings that you create. And some of the ones that you want the most are going to be the ones that are going to cause the most trouble. So you have to look into this, especially that sense of having felt that you were treated unjustly. Our ideas of justice can cause a lot of havoc. Because again, they're based on stories. And the story has a particular beginning, and you can identify who is the guilty party, and then what the resolution might be based on that idea. But then in the Buddhist view of things, there is no beginning to these stories. They go way, way back. I remember when I first met a John Fu, one of the few times he ever talked about the idea of past lives. This was right after my mother died. He said, you know, you were a soldier in a previous lifetime. Killed a lot of people, orphaned a lot of kids. That was it. But it put a whole new perspective on things. That what we think is the beginning of the story is not the beginning at all. There's a backstory, and then there's a backstory, and the prequel has a prequel. You don't know how far back you can trace it. It's when you allow yourself to think in those large spans of time, it makes it a lot easier to let go of the story. You think about the Buddha's knowledges on the night of his awakening. Started with his own personal stories and went way, way back. But then what allowed him to drop the stories was to think about the larger picture. And then he realized his story was just one little thread in a very complex fabric. The best thing to do was, the noble thing to do was to get out of the fabric entirely. So if you've been the recipient of some unfair treatment, just let it stop there. Tell yourself the fact that you have ears to hear these things and have a body that can be, be hit puts you in an unsafe position. Can you find a happiness that doesn't depend on those things? And where are you going to find that? Find it inside. Right here in the present moment, where you're near the breath. When it's going to open up, that's where it's going to open up. 
So try to stay as close to this spot as possible, the spot where there are no stories. I mean, the story of your breath meditation is what? You breathed in, and then you breathed out, and then you breathed in, and then you breathed out again. There's not much of a plot. That's why it's a good thread to follow. This narrative is calming. This narrative is something that helps you get centered. It helps you put an end to things. All the other stories that could otherwise just go on and on and on without end. You've got to leave the ends dangling. We always hope for closure, but samsara offers no closure at all. The only closure is the closure that comes inside, when you find the deathless. And that doesn't have any stories at all. So you're right here with the breath and the present moment. This is a good place to be. This is the place where things can come to an end. If you choose to have them come to an end, it's up to you. And you're making that choice every time there's a temptation to go wandering off away from the breath. Do you really want to put an end to those things, or do you want to go back and have another couple of rounds? The choice is yours. <laughs>